G'day and welcome back. Today I've got a Philips radio built in the Netherlands. Uh, the model number is B3X02A from about 1960 to 61. It's a nice looking unit, it's uh, nicely made, it's sort of thin and yeah, it's nice, I like it. It's only got a small speaker though, so you won't get a massive amount of sound from it. It has long wave, medium wave, short wave and FM and you can't see it but there's numbers in that clear area there. This only goes to 100 megahertz. The knobs are typical 60s, so they look pretty good actually, unusual, but they look alright. Uh, this is tuning, you can see the tuner moving there. Now this one is volume, I think. There are no names here, there's nothing to tell you what everything does, but it's got an on-off switch, that's so tuner. Now this one's weird, this is tone, I think, but halfway along it's got a switch, so I, just, I have no idea what that does. And I think this is the phono radio switch. Once again, there's no indication of where you are. You just have to do it, I guess. Here's the piano keys. They're really nice, nicely built into the little bit of uh, trim here. So you can select. Wow, that's hard to push. Um, I don't want to break them, but it looks like you can select them and then you turn it on and off with the on off knob. So these can be left selected. Now the back is the same as most backs on Philips, uh, voltage select, well it's a voltage indicator, uh, external speaker and uh, the record player input and there's a record player is up there. I really don't know if that's a tape deck I guess. It's got an arrow pointing down here so I'm not sure. Oh you put that into your tape deck to record I think. All right. Anyway here's the legend for the antenna setup and I'll take that FM out. Uh, oh yeah so there it is there. So. You just change that around to suit whatever antenna you have available. Uh, there's a screw missing from the back here, but I'll take the rest of them out. We'll have a look inside. To get the back off, I needed to remove the bottom as well. They have a couple of grounding wires that go onto a foil sheet that's glued on the bottom of the base of the thing, so I don't do those screws too. Uh, but with those two off, gee, you've got some good access there. It's really good. Uh, so while it's facing this way, there's one of those black moulded Phillips things. They're usually no good, or that one looks pretty good. It's, it hasn't cracked. Uh, Phillips caps. Um, looks like a poly cap there. Yeah, so there's not a lot of... In fact, I can't see any paper caps apart from the black Phillips one. I'll turn it up. I'll have a look at the back. The chassis looks good. It's um, clean. It's got a little bit of dust on it, but that'll clean up all right. Uh, 1961 transformer, and they're still using the little thermal fuse there with Rose's metal on it, so... Uh, but that's intact, so that's okay. Um, as I said before, pretty small speaker. It's not going to have big sound, this one. Uh, here's these horrid fall-apart in your hand IF cans from Philips. They've got a bit of paper wedged between these two cans. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, that's the mixer valve, capacitor, uh, and around the back's the FM module. All right, enough mucking around. Let's see if it'll work. I'll power it up. I've put an antenna on. I've selected it to medium wave. I've got it on 222 and dim bulb. So put some power on it. Nothing's happening. Uh, so this should turn it on, hopefully. There it goes. I'll turn it up. Oh, we've got something. Now that might be on PU. Ah, there it is. Love your lawn. Ah. You'll love 0% interest for on Toro's right-on mowers, including the powerful yet easy to handle... Fantastic. Cells or... Oh, it seems to have dropped off. Ah, lost it. Maybe not enough voltage. Um, only probably 28. Well, I'm going to go full voltage. I think it'll be all right. Yeah. Has been designed to go yeah, so it just didn't have enough power to keep it running. If I'd put it on an FM, it would have stopped completely. It's perfect. Fantastic. That's pulling that in beautifully. That's a really hard channel to get in our station. Um... I'll try FM. I do have the internal FM antenna on. Might work in here. There should be something here. Nah. Oh. Fantastic. 
fantastic. All right, well, I don't have to do much to this. The only gave me a second donor radio. I can swap out this dented trim strip and I'll try and remove some of the stains from the cloth. Uh, clean it up in here. That needs a new bit of wire on there. The capacitor here probably needs to be replaced. I'll check the alignment. I will not touch these cans unless I absolutely need to because they just fall apart. Um, and probably just clean and lubricate the mechanisms and I think that'll be it. There's some sort of switch here and I, I remember another Phillips had a similar thing and it was operated by the FM. There it is. I don't know what it's doing. The other Phillips I did had a string that pulled a switch in and out when you pushed FM. Anyway, something I forgot to check was the magic eye. It's on medium wave now. Near the inside, first up, we'll strip fitter. Drawn to have the clear air today. One Bromeo will be on the speed. It's working, but it's not coming over as far. I mean, that's a pretty strong signal, the first one, and it's not coming over quite as far. I'll just have a quick look there and just see what's going on. I pulled the chassis out and I pulled most of the case apart. There wasn't much in it. This gold strip is part of the glass, or it's attached to the glass, so just taking the glass off, remove that. So I'll just swap the glass and the gold strip with the other radio. The fabric and its backboard are glued into the case, so I can't take it out. It's really grubby, particularly around where the speaker is. Um, I'll have to try and clean it in situ. The veneer on the case is in pretty good condition. It's very rough, needs to be sanded off. It's got some heat damage here. I'll sand it back a bit and um, maybe just be able to give it another top coat and that should look nice again. As I said earlier, the chassis needs to be cleaned up a bit. Uh, there's a rubber mount here for the tuning capacitor. That's just gone, well, it's gone hard. I'll take this out to my workshop now. I'll clean it all up and then come back and do some work to it. I've cleaned this up a bit. It's, it's come up pretty good. It wasn't very dirty. Took a bit of dust off. I washed it over with some isopropyl alcohol. It really didn't clean it up very much, so I'm going to leave it as it is. It looks good. I'll turn it over. We'll have a look underneath. As I said yesterday, I'll replace these two caps here. I think they're paper caps. I thought they were going from the uh, mains to the ground, but they're not actually connected to the plate of the output valve. So I'll replace those two with standard caps. The other thing I need to look at is this capacitor here, the main filter capacitor. Here's the bottom of the capacitor. Well, I've already removed the wires. Just looking here, that's the vent on the bottom and it's leaked through. So I'll test this, but I suspect it won't be any good. I'll connect the meter here. Uh, that should be 100 and we've only got 65. I'll try the other one. Okay. Uh, that should be 50 and we've got 35. So I'm going to call that capacitor no good. Okay, let me take this out and we'll have a look on the bench. Oh, I've got it out. Unfortunately, I broke two of the tabs off. One I broke off, the other one I had to break off. I just couldn't get it out. So I'll have to make a new way of mounting it. I can only fit two capacitors like that inside the old one. The third one's going to have to go somewhere in the chassis somewhere. So I'll take this outside and we'll pull it apart. I'm at my workshop. Um, the air conditioner's running, so there might be a bit of background noise there. I've got to take this edge off here, and often I put it in my lathe. And I have people saying, well, it's OK, you've got a lathe, I can't do that. So I'm going to grind it off this time, just to see if it can be done. I've got my sander over there, so I'll set that up. I'm at my Linisher sander here. I've clamped a bit of wood on here, and I'm going to use that as a guide. And I'll be able to put this on here. So I should be able to just grind that edge off there. So I'll put a pair of goggles on, and I'll do that. All right, that's, um, that's it. I'll see if this will come off. I may need to go a bit further. No, look at that. <laughs> All right, that is perfect. No lathe required. I'll see if I can get this end out. There it is. There's the inside, and you can see how dry it is. I'm pretty sure that would have filled that up. But anyway, I'll try and get that out now. I have some long nose pliers here. These are pretty sharp on the ends. I've reshaped uh, the ends of this. See if I can dig, dig them in. And then I think I'll turn it anti-clockwise. <laughs> it seems to be wrapped that way. I don't know. How about that? There it is. Look at that. There's a bit of potting compound in the bottom there. A bit of acetone will take that out. I'll clean that up. 
while that capacitor soaks, I'll remake the mount for it if I can. I've got a bit of tin here, it's, uh, I don't know, 70 thou thick or something, and I'll have to try and fabricate a new one of these. I'll put a bit of tape over this to allow me to draw on it. And I've flattened out the little ring there. I'll trace around it and get a rough idea of what I need to do. All I need to do is rotate that onto there. I can draw that tab there and that tab there. So all I need to do is drill three holes, nibble away at that, uh, somehow cut that, I don't know how I'm going to do that, and then make it round. Well, I, look, I'm laughing, but I shouldn't be. I should be crying. That's one of the worst jobs I've ever seen. Anyway, it'll do the job. It's hidden by the, the crimp, and then these are bent over, so it won't look so bad. But, yeah, look, I should have taken more care. I'll take it inside. I'm going to bend it to fit in the holes, and then I'll make a new capacitor pack. I bent the little mount support to fit the chassis, so it doesn't look quite as bad as it did before. I've cleaned out most of the black compound out of this tin, uh, so that's okay. And I've made up a little capacitor pack here. I've printed off a couple of supports and they will centre the capacitors in the can and stop them rattling around. The supports have got ribs in them so the, any gas that uh, is generated if these capacitors ever blow can get past. And I've opened up the vent in the end so I can depressurise the can if it needs to. So that'll go in there like that. And that has to sit on the top of that of course. I'll take it out in the workshop and roll the edge over. As usual, I've got the two blocks of wood in a vise. This is very hard timber, Merbu. I'll just go around a few times until this flattens out. Looks pretty good so far. That's it. There's the rolled edge. It looks all right. And if it's in the uh, chassis, it's going to look fine. You wouldn't know. I will put a decal on here or something to let the next person know that it's been restuffed. I have the capacitor here ready to put in, so let's try it. If I can get it to line up. Oh, nice. All right. I have the capacitor nice and tight against the chassis there. I'll just give these a bit of a twist. I've got the little earth wire coming out here. Make sure I get that out of the way. There we go. And the last one here. I still have this second capacitor to fit, so I might put it on there or something. Perhaps, yeah, don't know. I'll find somewhere to put that. I'll connect all these wires up. We'll come back. We'll test it make sure it still works. That's all wired up. I mounted the second capacitor up here, and I've used this um, second tab here as just a post to mount all the wires. It's not connected inside, so it's, it's just a dummy post. I also went around and tested all these resistors now these squared off looking resistors, they're all high, but they're still within 10%. There's one or two that are maybe about 12%. They're just out. They're not going to make any difference to it. Uh, these ones here, the rounded off edge ones, they're perfect. They're spot on. So I'm going to leave all the resistors. They're working all right. Uh, as I said earlier, I'll replace these two black capacitors here. I'll turn this over. We'll make sure it still works after I worked on that capacitor. Let's give it a go. I've got it on dim bulb. We've got, uh, what have we got, 220 volts there, roughly. So I'll put it on. And uh, just check the light there. The light's not coming on at all. There it is. And also working forward around the outside. A length and a half into deadly and fast. So that's working all right, 26 watts, that's what it should be. I'll go to full power and should work properly now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's working, that's all I want to do, make sure this capacitor is working properly. It's on minimum volume. There is absolutely no hum at all, can't hear anything. can hear a bit of the radio, but there's no hum. So that's worked well. 
All right, leave it with me. I'm going to change those two black capacitors. I will come back. There's another capacitor I need to change and we'll check the voltages as well. I've got these two black capacitors out and I'll just check them because I suspect they won't be any good. So I'll just make sure I'm right. I might be wasting my time. Uh, so this is um, 2200 uh, picofarad. So we're on 20 there. That should reach. And it's 1.61. So that's not right, that's uh, half of what it should be. I'll, I'll get a, another uh, capacitor. I've got a replacement here, it's 222, which is 22 plus 20, so that's the same one. So I'll take that off. Now this was reading 1.6, I think. So we'll see what this one reads. 2.14, so 2.2, so that's correct. I'll check this one. This is um, this is hard to read. I think this is three three, and look at six point three. <laughs> so I've got a replacement for that. I'll try that one. Three point three. So they were out of spec, so it's a good thing I replaced them. All right, I'll stick them back in. I'll come back in a minute. I've replaced those two paper capacitors there. There's two other capacitors that need to be changed. This is the FM ratio detector capacitor and this one here is the uh, anode I beg your pardon it's the cathode bypass capacitor they may well be okay I'll change them anyway because they're 60 years old this is the output valve here this is the EL84 that's the little black capacitor I replaced and there's the other one there this little switch here moves up to here and disconnects this capacitor from ground that's when you select FM so it opens up the frequency range for FM this one here is just a bypass capacitor. It will affect the tone though, that one. Here's the cathode bypass capacitor. I think it says 64 microfarad. I don't have 64. I think the highest I've got is 47. Other than that, we go to 100. So I'll go to the lower value. Uh, that should still cut out the frequencies we want to get rid of without changing the tone too much. This is the FM ratio detector. It's centered around this EABC80 valve. Uh, that's the little electrolytic capacitor that's for microfarad that's pretty standard so I'll change that one as well that may well affect the balance of the both sides of the ratio detector so I may need to rebalance that the little switch on the back of the chassis that's operated by the FM button uh, that's it there and all it does is when you go to anything but FM that's closed it bypasses or mutes this little transformer so you don't get any FM. It stops the FM superimposing on the AM signal. That switch on top of the output valve there that I said before is disconnected when you go to FM. It also grounds this line here and that kills off the local oscillator so you won't get any AM superimposing on the FM. Uh, anyway, I'll change these two capacitors. This ratio detector capacitor, I'll replace that with a 4 microfarad capacitor. And the one over here, which I think is 64, I'll replace it with a 47. I've replaced both those capacitors. Uh, I'll turn it over and try it, but first I will check the values of the old ones. We'll see how close they were. Right, let's do a bit of cap lotto. Uh, this should be 4 UF. It's 5. I don't know what the tolerance is. Uh, that might still be all right. Looks a bit dried out, though. This is the cathode bypass, and it's 64 UF. Something up there. Mm. <laughs> Point 0.2 nanofarad? Yeah, I don't think that's working. I've connected that one to this Chinese tester. This is 64. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's uh, no good at all. Hmm. Alright, I'll try the other one. Uh, I'll test this one. So this is 4, 4 UF. Yeah, 5, 2, yeah, so that's um, 5.2 uh, microfarad. All right, let's try this out. I'll put it on dim bulb just to start it up. That looks pretty good. I'll actually go to full power. There's no reason it won't work on full power from crazy to outright appalling Ooh. don't they and we've been hearing in recent years some of the problems that uh the mining culture has <laughs> oh 
Right, AM's working. Try FM. Oh, it's right on the channel. FM is working as well. Because I changed that ratio detector capacitor, I probably should just check the balance. I can do it. I really do not want to adjust these. It'll just lead to tears. The next thing I think I'll do is just put a little dropping resistor in, just pull the voltage down a little bit so that it's more compatible with our 230, 240 volts that we have here. This is uh, compatible with 220 volts. So I'll check the voltages and we'll see what we can do. All right, let's have a look at the voltages on this power supply. Here's the primary side. There's that thermal fuse that's mounted on the side of the transformer. The secondary here, centre tap. Um, now, we should have a voltage here. We've got the three voltages coming out here. There's plus two, plus one, and just plus. The easiest thing to do is measure those probably at the applet valve plate. So let's have a look at that. So here's the plate here. It's pin seven on the applet valve, and we should have on AM, 186 volts. I can also measure the screen on uh, pin 9 here, so that should be 182. So I need 186 and 182. I've got the radio set up, I'll just turn it on. And I'll set that at around 220 volts. The radio's warmed up, it's on 220 exactly. Now here's pin 9, that's the screen. I think I'll just measure that, I won't measure the other one. 189, we needed 180. Six, I think. Uh, we're still on 220 here. I'll put this up to 237 or 8 or 240. There you go. So what have we got here? Uh, 205. So what's that? 10, nearly 20 volts too much. So I'll put a resistor in. We'll drop that back to 20 volts. Something else I could measure is the heater. So let's try that. I'm supposed to have 6.3. Yeah, so it's a bit high, 6.7. So we'll pull that down. I've done some calculations. I've worked out we need about 80 ohms. I used Ohm's law, and Ohm's law says resistance equals voltage divided by current. The current draw according to the meter on the dim bulb control was uh, 250 milliamps. We've got 20 volts, so it should work out to about 80. So I've got 250s here, uh, sorry, I've got two 150s here in parallel, so that should be equal to 75. So it's a little bit short, but that should be okay. That brown wire is the connection from the 220 selector on the voltage selector. I'll put the resistor in there for a minute. We'll see if it drops at about 20 volts. Just trying to tackle these together. This is temporary, of course. If it was real, I'd put a bit of tape around it. All right, let's turn it on and see what happens. Uh, that's 240. I want about 38, 238. So. That'll do. Alright, the radio's warmed up. I came up with a brainwave. I'll put my prong in the dial light there. 6.3. Wow. That Ohms was a smart guy, wasn't he? So that's absolutely perfect. I don't really need to check the other voltages. I have to turn the radio over to do it. I'll go out and make a bracket and I'll mount these two resistors down on the chassis here. I've mounted those two resistors in there. They're nice and solid. I've got heat uh, transfer paste on there. I also changed that white rubber grommet, or what was left of it, on the tuning condenser, so that's nice and springy again. I put a new dial light in. Somebody jammed in an MES globe instead of the bayonet, so I've changed that for the correct one. Something I almost forgot about was the magic eye, and it was a bit sort of, I'm not saying dull, but it, it didn't respond as well as I think it should. I'll check this resistor. This is the only one I haven't checked. This is 47 and 40, so that's 470,000 ohms. So I've got my meter set up here. We'll just see what it is. Wow, 1.1 meg. So 40, that's double. It's over double. I'll plug the magic eye in. We'll see if it makes a difference by changing that. I've got uh, 240 volts selected now. There's the magic eye. It's tuned into a station. So I'll just go... Yeah, so... Right, that's about as close as it'll get, and I think this is a pretty strong station. 
Let's check the voltages. This one should be 100 and something, 187. Yeah, that's plate voltage. And this side is 75. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Here's the magic eye here. Um, it says after that resistor you should have 46 volts. We've got more than that. And this side of it should be the 182 or something. I think we had 187. I'm not sure changing that resistor is going to make a lot of difference. I'll change it and see what happens, but I don't think it's going to do much. I've replaced the resistor. The radio's on. It's made a little bit of difference. It's a little bit further in. I'll switch this to FM. FM gets it from a different source. And we'll see if it makes much difference. I'll turn it up a little. It's a little bit better, but it's still not doing what I normally would expect it to do. Uh, this tube's pretty weak. It's still okay, but it's pretty weak. I don't have any spares. Uh, I'm going to leave this. I'll inform the owner if he wants to pay for a new tube. That's fine. As far as I'm concerned, I'll just leave it at this stage. The final thing I need to do is check that FM ratio detector. I change the capacitor in there. I'll just make sure it's balanced again before I give it back. This part here is the FM ratio detector. This uh, transformer here is still called the discriminator, although it's technically not. But there's an adjustment there somewhere. It doesn't show it on this schematic. You can tell it's a ratio detector because it's got two diodes and they're facing in opposite directions. Here's the capacitor that I replaced. And this line here and this line here need to be balanced. So the sine wave is smooth like that. If it's off center, the sine wave has a little gap in it and you'll get distortion. Now the normal method to check is to put a couple of resistors across that uh, capacitor there and you put a voltmeter on here and you would connect it back to the circuit somewhere probably I don't know up here somewhere across here and you would read the voltage and you need to zero it so it's not biased across that capacitor there or any capacitor and as I said it's done by adjusting the coil here. Having said that I'm going to try something else uh, the other way you can do it, these uh, ratio detectors naturally try and reject AM signals. So what you can do is feed an AM signal in here and when you adjust this coil to the minimum AM signal then these two should be balanced. And that's a, a method that Norbenda use. I've used it before. So I'm going to try that first. Here's the FM valve and if I can get its screen off, the valve might stay there. Now I could probably just use that uh, and connect a wire to the top. And I'll use this old shield, it has a bit of heat shrink around it to make sure it doesn't earth. And I'll connect my signal generator output to the little shield there. Now this is the adjustment we need to make. There's the valve with the ratio detector diodes in it. And I should have looked at this first because if this is all blocked up and won't move, I am not going to touch it. The FM is working fine. I'll just get the wax out here. These Phillips um, slugs are mounted on the thinnest bit of plastic that you've ever seen as a former and if you push too hard the plastic just collapses. It'll unwind. It's a mess. So if this doesn't move I'm going to leave it. I have a brand new Bernstein uh, slug adjuster here. Oh gosh, that does not want to move. I'll just heat the studs the absolute minimum amount just to see if that assists. If I can't move this, I'm giving up. I'll try again and... No, it's not moving. The, the Bernstein tool's twisting. So it's that tight. Okay. I put a drop of isopropyl alcohol in there, gave it a few minutes, and it's come free. So we can adjust it. I have the radio running, and I've got an AM signal going in. I've got 10.7 on the generator. Now, what we need to do is minimise the AM signal. And you can hear it dropping there. Coming back. I reckon about there's, yep, right there is the minimum signal. So that ratio detector should be balanced. Right, we'll see what it sounds like. Hmm. 
I just, I struggle to get, I, uh, sorry, FM here. Across the whole weekend, so it's all those songs you know and love, like this one from Blind Melon, No Rain, and it doesn't matter where you are, you can listen to us live now. Sounds alright, I'm not convinced it's distortion free. Um, perhaps I'll try the other method, we'll see how close it is. So, what I'm going to do now is this bit here. This is for FM, uh, it says put the dial on 100, it doesn't really matter because it's well bypassed by now. 10.7 uh, on the signal, and we put it through a 1500 puff capacitor. It says to put the signal into grid 1 of B3. B3 is the EF85 between the two transformers. That's what we looked at a few minutes ago. Two resistors across C38, which is the electrolytic. On the junction of the two resistors, you put the diode voltmeter, and then you connect the other end of the diode voltmeter to C34 R13 junctions, which I'll, I'll show you. Here's the electrolytic I replaced, so the two resistors go across here. The join of that goes to the voltmeter. The other end of the voltmeter goes up here, which is R13 and C34. So this goes on there. And we inject the signal into grid one of this EF85. Let's have a look at it on the radio. I've set it up as they've said. There's the two resistors and it's going across that capacitor. This is coming off the resistor capacitor junction they said to put the voltmeter on. And this over here is the signal going into the grid of the EF85. And I've got my vacuum tube voltmeter here. It's set right in the center. So it's actually pointing to nine on the top scale there. I do have 10.7 going in. So I'll put some power on. So we'll see what it does. You can see the needle deflecting on that voltmeter. I think that'll come back up. It didn't come up. <laughs> I'll see what happens if I adjust it. It's coming back. I can't see that hitting zero. I'll pull this slug all the way out and wind it in and see where we end up. It's completely out of range now. It's going further away and it'll come back. Now we are right on nine and that's not where it was. I've just turned the volume up and you can hear the AM come back in, goes away, comes back in. So that looks like the right spot, doesn't it? The little markers lined up. I don't think that's where it was. I think it's way further out than it used to be. We'll try that, see what it sounds like. I've uh, got a bit of an aerial view going here. Um, I'll turn it up. Second guess. There we go. The Reserve Bank Governor Norfolk Island is counting its blessings after being. That sounds much better. Tropical cyclone Gabrielle. It was downgraded to a category two just hours before it passed the territory. Okay, so that's that's much better. Uh, I'll turn that up again. And Pacific motorway then. That's too far away to get it. Good idea. Um, my local state, well, they're all doing the news at the moment. Yeah, just can't quite get to the local station. Far fewer people are being rescued from the rubble. In so th that sounds really good. Uh, it'll sound better. I'll try it on a bit of music later, but I think that's pretty much perfect. I'll remove all the clips and wires, and I think we're pretty much right for this. I might move on to the case. I'm at the workshop. I have the cabinet. And the finish on it is, um, it's not smooth. It's lost its gloss, I guess. And it's probably darkened off a bit, as we said before. There's a bit of damage there from the heat from the valve. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll just take it off with a bit of P600 uh, wet and dry paper. And uh, I'll use a bit of turpentine as the lubricant. And we'll just see how it comes up. I did suggest perhaps that I would re-spray it with a clear again. I'll avoid that if I can. Alright, I'll get some turps and we'll give it a rub back. I'll put a bit of turps on it and we'll see what happens. The turps will kind of clean any grime out as well. And the paper, of course, will smooth it off. Now I can feel that getting much smoother there. Wow, it's quite a difference. 
take off the... Yeah. Uh, you might be able to see it. You can see the dirt in there as well as the, um, you know, it's taking off the clear as well, of course, but it's taking an enormous amount of dirt off. Maybe I should have cleaned it first. I sanded the whole cabinet, but it's not coming up very well. It's got light areas there and there, and you can see where that heat mark was now. So once it dried off properly, it really wasn't good enough. In the past, I've had success with using Restore Finish, so I'll give it a go. If it doesn't work, I can you know, go back and use the proper stains. I've got a bit of that dark oak on a rag. Now this will look impressive as I put it on now, but it will dry uh, a bit differently to what it looks like when it's wet. In fact, it looks amazing. So I think that'll work. Uh, you have to put a hard wax over the top, which I have plenty of. So I think this will be all right. I've let it dry for a minute or so. I'll just wipe off any excess. And it's not taking much off at all. All right, well that looks very good. I've left this for about an hour. It's still a little bit light there. Um, I can't see it from where I am. I think the camera's picking it up. It's just ever so light. I'm not going to worry about it. I was only supposed to get the radio going anyway, so this, this is all candy. I'm going to use some Canaba wax. This is a brown tinted one. I've had this for some years now. I think it's starting to dry out a bit. I'd have to add something to it. So this should bring the gleam out again. And it's a hard wax as well, so it'll put a nice hard cover over the top of the finish. I'll do the sides as well, of course. And you do need to be uh, a little bit vigorous so that the wax will melt. It'll go into the wood a bit. And when you take it off, you've got to be pretty vigorous as well to melt it and, uh, you know, thin it out to a nice thin layer. I'll leave this for about 15 minutes, come back and give it a good polish. All right, I'll start polishing. And as I said, you've got to be pretty vigorous with it. Right, let's have a look at that, and it looks pretty jolly good. I reckon that's good enough. I've finished polishing, I did the ends, and I've done inside here as well. And it looks really good. <laughs> it looks really good. Really happy with it. I will take this inside now, and I'll be able to reassemble it. I'm back inside with the case, and I'm going to put the chassis back in. I looked at this antenna when I first pulled it apart. I didn't really look at it, I saw it. I'm not even sure what it's supposed to be. I, I thought it was for FM, but... Um, may well be a better AM antenna. I think I'll take it out. The plastic on here is just falling apart, well, certainly up there. Um, I doubt this has a lot of value as an antenna anyway. So I'll remove it, then I'll put the chassis back in and give it a final test. I put it all back together, it's on, it should have warmed up, I'll turn it up a bit. I've got it on FM there. So the them in your glove box, but storing them online instead. So it's working all right. The little eye's not too bad. I did try an eye out of the second one of these radios I've got. It was worn out, but it actually closed up much further than this one. So it's there's an issue with that eye, but it's working fine. It does what it needs to. So it sounds good. The tiny little speaker here, but in the wooden box and yeah, whatever, it sounds nice. I really like the, I like the old radio actually. I like the thin lines, you know, not too boxy, not too bulky. Yeah, really nice. Uh, just put on AM. Uh, being cut off and fast, like we see on broadcast television, you're able to sit in this landscape and, and actually watch things unfold. So, oh. so, yeah, it's really good, really good. If it was mine, I would source a new cloth. There's a lady in the Netherlands that redoes them by hand, makes three hand stitches them, uh, but... It's not mine, so I'm just going to leave it. I did attempt to clean this area up. You, you almost can't do it. I put a nice new cream cord on here. It's got an earth on it as well now. Uh, as I looked at yesterday when I did the case, it's come up really nice, very nice. The light spot's still there, but overall it looks good. It looks very good. I also swapped over the glass with the uh, dent-free gold strip on it. I hope you enjoyed watching me play around with this. It wasn't much of a video, I guess, but uh, 
it's come up nice. I'm happy with it. The owner should be. And I hope you can join me next time for another radio adventure.